Now the foreground selection tool is a tool that will allow you to make a selection of your foreground, which you can then use to separate your foreground and background from. So once you make that selection, the creative options you have are limited based on your imagination and what you want to achieve for the artwork that you're working on. So let me give you a couple quick examples and then we'll go ahead and get started. So let's say you want to target the background itself to maybe change the colors in the background or maybe add some contrast or make them different. You can do that once you make your selection of the foreground. You can then target either the foreground or the background depending on what you want to achieve. The other thing you can do is you can cut out your foreground or your subject with this particular tool so that you can then go ahead and place your subject on a different background. So how cool is that? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we use this particular tool so you can then begin using it for your own artwork. So the first thing we need to do once we make our selection of that tool is we need to make a rough outline of our foreground. So we can tell GIMP this is the foreground and we want to select it and not the background. We then have some tool options here that will help us further refine our selections. So the first thing you're going to notice right here is the different modes. So the two that I use most often are this one right here add to the current selection, which is the default option. And then we have subtract from the current selection. We also have an option to feather the edges of our selection. So this is very helpful because it's going to help smooth out the edges of that selection. So you don't have jagged lines. If you have this turned off, you're going to notice that the edges are a lot more rough versus having it turned on. Now you can go from zero to 100, but personally I prefer between five and 10 for the radius. And that's going to depend on the quality of the image. The higher the resolution, the image, the higher the radius I'm going to apply. So for this particular image, I'm going to use 10 and I will go anywhere from five to 20 again, depending on the size of that image. Now we do have some other options down here that we're going to talk about as we apply the tool, but I do want to mention real quick, we do have two different algorithms that are going to be used to make the selections for us. So the first one right here under engine says matting global. Now with matting global, you're going to have some different iterations that you can apply to further refine your selection. And then under matting 11, we have levels and active levels that will help us again define that selection. And you're going to need to adjust these options based on your image. And if you're not getting the results you want, you may want to come down here and make changes to the default settings here. We also may want to change one from the other again, if we're not getting the results we want. I find that matting 11 tends to work out best for the type of work that I do. So if you're working with matting global and you don't like the results, instead of coming down here and making adjustments on the iterations, you can simply go in and select the other option as long as that tool is still active as you're working on it. All right, so let's go ahead and make our rough selection by clicking and drawing out an outline around our subject. Now it doesn't have to be perfect and directly along the edges. And that's because of the tool itself is going to make that refinement based on our rough selection and the options that we select in the tool options. So to complete the selection process, we need to go back to the beginning until we see this little yellow circle. Release your mouse button and you have the first part done. Now to get into the other tool options to further refine our selection, we need to hit our enter or return key. Once we do that, we will then get a color mask and we can change that color mask if needed, because let's say our image has a lot of red in it and it's hard to see that overlay. 
Well, we can come down here into Tool Options under Preview and select different colors. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on red for now. And we have two different types of overlays. We have this dark overlay here, that's for the background. Our lighter red overlay is for the foreground. Now, once we get to this point, our tool icon changes to our brush icon. So what we wanna do now is we want to increase the size of that brush from here so that we can paint in the area that should be part of the foreground. So we need to further refine the foreground for GIMP to know exactly where to apply our selection. Now, when I begin painting, it's probably going to be a different color than what you see. And that's because my foreground color on my color palette over here on the left is set to this green color. So it's going to use whatever foreground color you have selected. It doesn't really matter because all we're really doing is we're telling GIMP this is the foreground. Once you release, it will then remove that light red colored overlay from your foreground. Now again, we don't need to come in here and be perfect because GIMP is going to use these algorithms and further refine our selection based on what we've applied so far. Now, the other thing we may want to do is come in here and use a smaller brush on this hair here and over here. And maybe we have some stray hair somewhere else that we want to include in the foreground. We're going to use a smaller brush width in order to do that. Now, right now it's kind of hard to see. So what we can do is we can zoom in to further refine our selection. But the problem is if we come over here and we select our zoom tool, then GIMP will automatically apply the selection process now, and we will not have any of that stray hair that we want selected, well, selected. So instead of using our zoom tool from over here, we do have some other options up here that we can use to zoom in with. So to zoom in, we're going to use our plus icon. If you don't have a numeric keypad, you can hold down your shift key plus the plus sign, and that will zoom in and then control or command if you're on a Mac, plus the minus key will zoom out. So I'm gonna go ahead and press my plus key so I can zoom in. All right, so let's go ahead and make some selections here of our hair. I may need to go a little bit larger on my brush, and then I can just paint in the areas where that stray hair is. Maybe just refine it a little bit up here. And then if we wanna to navigate to another part of our image, we have to use these old fashioned scroll bars here on the right and bottom of our image. We can't use our keyboard shortcut, which is the space bar, because again, we will be kicked out of this tool and it will automatically apply our settings to that selection. So I'm just gonna go around here to the hair and apply the brush to those areas where the hair should be selected as well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out with Command or Control and the minus key. Now, before we actually apply our selection to the image, we may want to preview it first. So this is going to remove the secondary overlay or the foreground overlay and it's going to apply one overlay showing where the selection will not be added. So once we click on this, it's going to compute that algorithm based on the one that you chose down here under engine. And as you can see, the edges are very jagged and it didn't do a very good job of selecting different parts of the image. So if we go to engine and switch to matting 11, it's going to update that algorithm and it's going to further refine the selection, hopefully, and hopefully give us a better result. Now, depending on the size of the image and the speed of your computer will determine how long this takes. So as you can see, it's taking a little while. All right, so it looks like it's all done and it's further refined the edges and it's much smoother than it was before. Now we have some area right here and right here that's part of the selection and it's actually part of the background. The same with this area here and this area here. So I'm going to remove the preview mask. 
I'm going to go ahead and zoom back in with my plus key. And then I'm going to select draw background so I can let GIMP know, okay, this area right here is not part of the foreground. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in that area to let GIMP know exactly where the background is versus the foreground. And then I can come back in here with my foreground tool and further refine the selection as needed. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom out with Command or Control and our minus key. Okay, we're gonna turn on Preview Mask again. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this part of the tutorial so you don't have to sit here and watch this complete. All right, so it's done a little bit better job with our selection process in this area here, a little bit here, but it's still showing a lot of the background. So you have to consider this tool as a starting point. It's not going to work perfectly on all images, and you may need to use other selection tools in conjunction with it in order to get the selection that you want. So I would think of this as a quick option for making a selection of a large subject. And then I would use something like our quick selection tool, which is located right here, to further refine my selection.